All right, welcome back. It's time for a very hot topic uh, of this morning on the program. Court has ordered uh, the President Muhammad Buhari's administration to account for 460 million Chinese loan. Um, Serap has gone to court to look for uh, understanding, to look for explanation on ve this very important contract. And set up there is the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project. And they've been able to get the court to order this government to give an account to publish total amount of money paid to the Chinese and local companies and contractors and the status of the implementation of the project. I have been joined by Mohammed Abdullahi. A uh, public affairs analyst from Kaduna State. Good morning to you, Mohammed. Good morning, Nigerians. My pleasure, always. All right, so, Mohammed, constitutional rights at play here and a test of the system. Uh, what's your take on this that's playing out? First of all, Serap going to display this right and getting the judge to have this beautiful, laudable uh, judgment given to them. Uh, this is very commendable of Sarah. Uh, they instituted so many uh, lawsuits against uh, the present government, and uh, this is one of the very few that they've, uh, they've, they've gotten outright judgment, you know. Uh, so having said that, it's, it's, it's very commendable. Uh, I think it's within the rights of every Nigerian to know and understand when the government uh, uh, borrowed money and what such money is meant for and what is the status of the i mean in terms of the implementation of the of uh, of the loan mm -hmm. so i think it's, it's within the rights of not only serap but uh, nigerians and nigeria as a whole to hold the government accountable in terms of uh, loan received and what actually uh, has been achieved with with the loan so it's very commendable uh, it's, it's something that i think I, i'm sure nigerians should to commend Serap for, and I think it's something that we should we should do onwards because uh, you know it is so unfortunate. Like we keep saying, this is a perfect example of um, uh, the fact that government is is uh, is a continuum. Mm -hmm. If you if you don't mind, I'm sure many Nigerians will call that this loan in particular that we mentioned. I mean, the CCTV loan uh, was actually uh, received by the Jonathan administration. Uh, since 2010. So it's not something that the, even though we understand that President Buhari's administration received a whole lot of loan uh, within these past eight years, but this particular loan was received by, uh, I mean, during the Jonathan administration. And, it, and if if my memory serves, serves me right, I think it was done then by the Minister of uh, Finance, then Olusha uh, in in the company of the police affairs minister, I mean, Adamu Waziri, and then the then inspector general of police, Hafiz Ringim, yes. they went all the way to China to negotiate this loan, and they got this loan uh, with the sole purpose of saying uh, they want to make sure the federal capital church, I mean, the, 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 the political base of Nigeria is well monitored in terms of a, a CCTV. And they got this loan, and it's so shocking that 23, uh, uh, sorry, 13 years after, uh, more than five, eight years and so since the previous administration left office, this, why Nigeria is servicing this loan, this, um, this project has not seen the light of the day. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's shocking. And uh, I am surprised, yes, it's laudable that this, um, uh, what's it called, this judgment is given, but I am surprised that we are actually not objective in terms of what we do as a country because we have the name of the company zt communications what what we do in nigeria is that when we get this loan from china china gives us all the terms you know they provide the personnel they provide the expertise and so on in terms of this particular loan zt communications was awarded the contract so we know the name of the contractor we should go after them as well we should ask questions we know the people that you know, negotiated this loan. They are Nigerians. They are still alive. Yeah. Olusegu Aganga probably is not in Nigeria, but I know, I know, we know he's still alive. He should come and account. Uh, what's it called? Hafiz Zingim, the former Inspector General of Police, 
the former police uh, police affairs commissioner, Ademo Waziri. These are, they, these are Nigerians who, you know, should be someone to tell Nigerians what they did with this loan. Yeah, exactly why the it, it's very... Um, I don't know how to describe this. When the finance minister was being questioned and she said, yes, this loan is being, is being serviced, but she didn't have details about the loan. And... Uh, she then uh, said that um, referred the committee to the Federal Capital Territory uh, Authority to get details about this. As you have said, government is continuum. Why didn't this administration seek for further explanation and you know accountability over this? Why were we just servicing these loans without um, detailed information and inquiries and queries? about the implementation you, you you said it all i think this is 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 one of our biggest and major problem in the country you know um like you rightly said why is this present administration servicing the loan but not asking question hmm. about the implementation of the project it's shocking i don't think i'm uh, i'm in the right position to 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 and to answer that query uh or that question rather uh, the, the people in government, you know, uh, like the, and I think it is, is a failure of duty mm. by the uh, Minister of Finance, Aisha Zainab, mm. saying that she doesn't, she can't tell. It's, 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 really, it's really a slap in the face of Nigerians. Mm. Because why are you servicing the loan? Why are you paying back when you can't ask questions of the status and implementation of uh, what the loan uh, is, is, was or is used for? You know, so it, it's very clear. Uh, that uh, people don't do their job, you know, they just get paid, you know, understand, live, or uh, enjoy the luxury of office, but don't do, don't put in the hard work uh, that comes with the office. Because it's simple. What she what she told the House of Reps and even the court, it's simple that she should have she could have channeled that same energy to the FCTA that she's mentioning. You know, she's she's in charge of the finance of the country, so she should have she has the power to ask questions. Yes, we are. Uh, serving this, we are servicing this loan as per uh, the agreement with the, with, with the Chinese government and so on and so forth. So, but what did you do with the money? You know, uh, so it's, it's, it's really unfortunate that we are at this uh, level and juncture in this country that, uh, you know, everything goes. So, but, but like, like you rightly mentioned, it is, uh, is an important uh, failure or is an indication of the failure of uh, accountability of government to tell Nigerians what they did with the loan, even though it was by the previous government, which they are now servicing. Now, given the timing of this judgment, do you see anything coming out of it, especially uh, for two reasons? One, um, as I said, the timing and the, 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 the record that this administration has with regards to obeying court judgments. Now, it's very obvious. Obvious uh, to every Nigerian that uh, I think this administration leaves office on the 29th of May. I mean, in less than uh, in, in less than probably six days. So it's and we understand the bureaucracy of government that, uh, uh, in fact, six days is like uh, is like no days at all. For particularly in this part of the world where the bureaucracy is so terrible, uh, for you know uh, Nigerians to really understand and see. Uh, or for the this administration to provide accountability in terms of what the court judgment uh, mentions. So I really see, it's my opinion, please, but I really see nothing coming out from this because, you know, they might say, okay, we are, we are leaving office. So probably uh, the next, the incoming administration uh, will have, uh, will continue from, 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 from there. But I think what I would say is that it is important, like we will be mentioning and we, we, we keep saying, Government is, is a continuous process. In fact, this is a perfect example uh, that government is a continuous process. You know, when things we don't, what we do in this part of the world is that we, we particularly when we are from same party and so on and so forth, we tend to cover up a whole lot of negativities. Mm. It is, it's never done that way. I think uh, the <clears throat> the interest of the country and the people should be forced even before party lines and affiliations. You know, when I, I expect that the incoming government, despite the fact that it's an APC government, when it comes into power fully fledged uh, in, on the 29th of this month, they should check and see. I mean, 
and hold the outgoing government accountable where possible because this will be for the betterment of the country and Nigerians at large, irrespective of the fact that uh, it's, it's the same party affiliation. So I think uh, it's important that uh, uh, previous governments and previous actions of government are checkmated in order not to fall into this kind of uh, uh, situation that we find ourselves at the, at the moment. You know, uh, given that we are assessing Nigerians from all walks of life everywhere, uh, beginning to assess this outgoing government, their performances in uh, key sectors of the economy. Uh, how would you assess uh, the finance minister, Hajia Zainab Ahmed, especially in comparison with uh, Kemi Adonshu and Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwela, with the way she has handled uh, the sector that she occupied? Yeah, um, no one is 100% good or bad and so on. But uh, I would say she's had a, a, a bit of controversies during her tenure. Uh, probably is due to experience. You can't, uh, uh, to be candid, uh, probably you, you want to compare her di directly with uh, Kemi Adeoshu. Yes, but, you know, to Okonjo Iwela, uh, Okonjo Iwela has more international exposure, international experience coming from the World Bank and so on and so forth before she became the finance minister in Nigeria. So, um, but having said that, I think she, she's, she's also, I mean, uh, Zainab also, uh, the, the, the current minister has also done her bit and her best in terms of uh, making sure that, uh, uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, Nigeria's financial stability is, is on track. But uh, if you look at some other areas as well, she's fall short. I, I think... Uh, in my own opinion, please, I, I feel probably uh, she wasn't really carried along in so many policies and actions of uh, of the government, which is shocking. Because if you if, if you remember in uh, in December 2022, she actually uh, voiced out that uh, uh, you know on the on 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 on, on, the, on various media to mention the fact that she wasn't carried along by the presidency in terms of the. A uh, new Naira note design, you know, which is shocking that uh, the Minister of Finance of a country uh, isn't aware at all that the government is intending, I mean, the CBN mm -hmm. and definitely the presidency is intending to change the Naira note and design. She, you know, if you remember, she actually yeah, came out to say I that. I do remember that. Some of the, I mean, some of my own assessment of her that probably she was lagging behind in her duties or probably the powers that be in the presidency. Uh, see her as a as a bit of threat or someone who doesn't really compromise. Uh, so they, they kind of um, set her aside in some key uh, policies and uh, actions of the government. But 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 aside that, I think she's done her bit and and, and best. But definitely not comparable to Okonjo Iweala because I remember you know during the days of Okonjo Iweala, in fact, we were able to clear our debts uh, to reasonable uh, I mean uh, amount. Definitely because of our clout and our international exposure, we're able to negotiate a whole lot in terms of our, our debt financing. But if you look at our debt financing at the moment, it's skyrocketing. I think Nigeria's debt is uh, more than $47 trillion at the moment. Uh, you know, So it's, 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 it's challenging, but uh, like I mentioned, she's done her, her, her best. So uh, I mean, the, the incoming administration, we look forward to occupy the seat next. Now, going by the importance of this contract that we're talking about uh, for the CCTV, which was meant to provide uh, electronic surveillance for the federal capital territory, provide the Nigeria police with anti-terrorism intelligence backup, and, 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 and looking at the security situation that this administration has had to grapple with, is it not shocking, though, that this administration did not investigate? Because uh, looking at some of the reports about this, uh, contract, it would appear that um, some inquiries were made in the past. The House of Reps uh, did make some inquiries, and we do understand that um, the reports uh, of the people who were sent to China to investigate this company, ZTE, has not seen the light of day up to date. Um, you know, uh, sometimes I wonder how we run our, our administration and how we run our country. You, you just reminded me, since 2019, and this is 2023, 
I remember then the House Committee on, on Finance, led by Honorable Faleki, uh, invited the same uh, Minister of Finance, and she said it there then that uh, she really, even though the, the, the what's it called, even though the government is servicing the loan, but she couldn't, uh, you know, uh, you know, tell about the implementation of uh, the project, which is which was shocking. And this is 2023. We are still saying the same thing. So it means people were not held accountable, and people play with their job, definitely. You know, because if since 20, 2019 we've been investigating the fact that yes, we've had a loan of 446 million dollars misappropriated, and then in 2023. We are still on the same page. What does that tell you about our country? What does that tell you about our processes? And what does that tell you about governance in 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 in, in Nigeria? It's, it's it's so shocking. So it it's it's all boiled out to the fact that people don't do their job. People don't, and people, in fact, people are not held accountable uh, because even the House of Reps that are supposed to checkmate, you know, that initiated this probe in the first instance. What did they do afterwards? This is four years after 2019, 2023. What did they do afterwards? You know, did they issue any kind of uh, warrant of arrest, either on the minister or the FCT uh, people or the FCDA people who are in charge of developing the FCT and so on and so forth? Or did they issue, did they summon, like I mentioned, Hafiz Ringim, who was the then Inspector General of Police, who negotiated this loan, who were, uh, this, uh, um, for whom, you know, these were supposed to provide surveillance, like you said, the Nigerian police. And even the uh, the police affairs, uh, police affairs uh, minister as at then at the Muwaziri. So a lot of questions need to be asked. And like I mentioned earlier, you know the fact that we keep shying away from asking people to be accountable is is shocking. People who have held a whole lot of uh, uh, you know powerful positions in this country have committed a whole lot of. Uh, crimes, whether financially and otherwise, but they, they work freely. Nobody is holding them accountable. It's shocking. It's, it's never done anywhere all over the world, except in this part of the world. So uh, if we, in four years, we've instituted a probe, and then still after four years, it is actually a court order that is uh, that, that is that we are waiting for, for people to actually be held accountable. In fact, and even with the court order, it's just six days to the end of this administration. It, it means nothing definitely will happen nothing definitely will happen and then the the honors uh, to appeal or provide clarity will then fall on the incoming uh, administration that will be uh, headed by uh, Bala Ahmed Tinubu. obviously and we hope uh, there will be a deviation from the status quo we hope that uh, his administration will, will like i mentioned earlier in respect of party affiliations whether the same party apc pdp whatsoever Nigerians' interest and the interest of Nigeria will be at the at the front burner. That will make it, you know, uh, uh, that, that that will make it, uh, you know, the best for, for for the country and its citizens. Well, thank you so much, Mohammed Abdullahi, for your time on the breakfast this morning. Mohammed Abdullahi has joined us from Kaduna State to take a look at the judgment uh, asking the federal government to give account on how the $460 million Chinese loan secured to fund the failed CCTV project in Abuja uh, was utilized. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Mohammed. Thank you very much. My pleasure. The program continues in a moment. Do stay with us.